They are humanity's most remote outposts, and they regularly keep NASA experts on their toes with serious complications. No man-made object has ever ventured as far into space as the venerable Voyager probes. But the whole truth is that Voyager 1 sent a series of confusing data back to Earth some time ago that scientists simply couldn't make sense of. But what had happened? As is well known, the probes were equipped with the Voyager Golden Records, which also contained a message to extraterrestrials. So could it be that our galactic attempt at contact has finally been answered? Or can the mysterious Voyager messages ultimately be explained in another way? Be sure to stay tuned until the end if you want to know the true story behind this mystery. The year is 1977, and the two Voyager probes leave Earth. However, the spacecraft did not set off into the vastness of space with the aim of one day reaching interstellar space. They were simply sent to gather new information about the outer planets of the solar system, which were still largely unexplored at the time. As a result, no one could have guessed that this was the start of the longest mission in the history of space travel. And since, as mentioned above, our knowledge of the planets was still quite limited. The program did not even have a fixed research focus. Instead, the probes were deliberately given broad objectives in advance. These included analyzing the atmospheres of Jupiter and Saturn, but also to examine the moons, magnetic fields, and composition of charged particles and plasma in detail. And if everything had gone according to plan, the Voyager spectacle would have been over after just five years. But today we know that the pair of probes ultimately exceeded their originally predicted lifespan. After providing us with groundbreaking and in some cases still unique images and data of our outer planetary neighborhood, NASA decided to extend the mission and send Voyager 1 and 2 into a cosmic world that no other man-made object had ever entered before. In August 2012, Voyager 1 became the first space probe in history to enter the mysterious interstellar space and leave the boundaries of the solar system behind. Voyager 2 followed six years later, and while the flying old-timer is now 20 billion kilometers away from the sun, its identical sister probe has even put 25 billion between itself and our host star. The overarching goals of the Voyager interstellar mission include investigating the sun's magnetic field, analyzing solar wind and cosmic radiation, and exploring the heliopause, the outer boundary of the sun's sphere of influence. In other words, the Voyager probes are giving us direct insight into a cosmic area that was previously a great unknown to us. And this is the puzzling part. Not all Voyager data is always so revealing. Quite the contrary. Some time ago, experts were confronted with a series of messages that simply did not make sense and immediately sparked the wildest speculation. Inexplicable data chaos. Three years ago, Voyager 1 suddenly began sending strangely chaotic telemetry data gibberish back to Earth, which initially left experts completely baffled. What was particularly confusing was that initially, no source of interference for the faulty data could be identified, although the information from the attitude control system suggested a system failure. Unfortunately, this did not correspond with the fact that the probe was otherwise functioning smoothly. It continued to transmit data from its scientific instruments and responded as usual to commands from Earth. Specifically, the Attitude Articulation and Control System, AACS, is a fundamental component that performs a number of basic tasks. These include aligning the powerful main antenna, which must always point precisely toward Earth in order to maintain communication with Voyager 1 across enormous distances. While Earth-based scientists use this radio link to send commands to the space probe, the probe uses it to send data it has collected back to our blue home planet. Well, actually, but since, as mentioned, the data has been reduced to a meaningless jumble. The first thought was that Voyager's main antenna was no longer pointing towards Earth, but that wasn't the case. The signal strength of the radio connection remained high. In the weeks that followed, NASA experts worked flat out to find the source of the error and the internet used the time to come up with some, well, astonishing theories about Voyager's chopped up data salad. What was really behind the strange signals? As mentioned at the beginning, the ancient probes are also carrying a very special cargo, two gold-plated copper records which serve as a kind of cosmic greeting message to extraterrestrial life forms. The Voyager golden records are intended to convey the diversity of life and culture on Earth. 
to this end, they contain greetings in over 50 languages, music from different eras, earthly nature and everyday sounds, and dozens of images. However, simply finding this sign of human life would be far from enough for a hypothetical alien civilization. First, they would have to decode the records using the instructions on the protective cover. These use binary representations and information about the hydrogen atom as a unit of time to enable decryption. If they succeed, however, the finders would know that there is a planet called Earth out there that has produced the most amazing creatures. Unfortunately, this could also turn out to be a great danger. Since the golden records also reveal our position in the universe, it would be easy for a hostile civilization to use the information served up on a silver platter to prepare a devastating invasion. Fortunately, this scenario remains just an unpleasant thought experiment for now. Partly because three years ago, no warlike aliens were involved in the data chaos surrounding Voyager 1. Contrary to adventurous speculation, the probe was not reprogrammed and sent back to us with a declaration of war in its luggage. But then, what was the problem? Well, to cut a long story short, NASA engineers first discovered that the attitude control system was actually working perfectly, except for the fact that it was mistakenly trying to send telemetry data to Earth via an onboard computer that had long since stopped working. As a result, the data arrived as meaningless junk. And after the error had been identified, NASA used the radio antennas of the Deep Space Network to instruct the AACS to send the data back to the correct onboard computer. This was successful, but the question remained as to what had caused the attitude control system to default to the wrong computer in the first place. The answer ultimately lay in the flight data subsystem, a computer that packs the data into packets before sending it to Earth. As it turned out, 3% of the memory was defective, and it may have been a single chip that caused the agonizing chaos. This could have been hit by a high-energy particle, or simply worn out, of extraterrestrial worlds and mysterious signals. But if we pick up the golden records again at this point and turn the cosmic tables, a question inevitably arises. Could it be that signs of life or messages intended for us have already been picked up? Well, if you're even remotely interested in the subject, you'll have heard that the James Webb Telescope recently made a sensational discovery proving that a molecule exists on the water world K2-18b that is produced exclusively by living organisms on Earth. More specifically, it is dimethyl sulfide and or dimethyl disulfide. However, it's not yet clear whether this necessarily means that K2-18b has given rise to life. Experts are currently investigating whether it's possible that the supposed biosignature could have been created by abiotic beings. And until this question is answered, we still have some time to flip back the calendar to the summer of 1977. And remember that this was not only the year Voyager was launched. Astrophysicist Jerry R. Emmett also recorded a remarkable narrowband radio signal at that time, which continues to keep experts in suspense to this day. And the following shows why the American uttered an awestruck wow at the time. It's still the most promising candidate when it comes to the question of an extraterrestrial message. The bottom line is that the narrowband signal showed striking similarities to those signals that are normally generated using antennas. However, the exact background of the so-called WOW signal has always been uncertain because it was never received again. Furthermore, we don't even know where it came from, partly because the Ohio State University's Big Ear Radio Telescope only picked up the signal with one of its two antennas. As a result, it was unfortunately not possible to identify the source of the signal more precisely. But a few years ago, a Spanish amateur astronomer announced that he had finally solved the mystery of its origin. More specifically, Alberto Caballero took a close look at the Gaia star catalog and focused on sun-like stars. No wonder, since the only life we know of in the universe orbits around such a celestial body. And the bottom line is that the Spaniard came to the conclusion that the WOW signal most likely originated from the region around a star with this unwieldy scientific name, 2 Mass 1928-1982-2640123. This is located around 1800 light years away from us in the constellation Sagittarius, and, according to Caballero, means all the criteria for serving as a central star for life-friendly planets. 
and on one of these, an extraterrestrial civilization could have flourished, sending a strong radio signal into space, and thus perhaps deliberately attempting to make contact with other worlds and life forms. And if you click on the subscribe button now, you'll never miss another video from us. So click on the thumbs up and subscribe to stay up to date from now on. We'll see you soon.